Thank you so, so much, Alan. Uh, and unfortunately, I think we have to save the, the questions until the, the general questioning round, because we're already a bit... We are, exactly. <laughs> uh, and, and, but I'm sure we will have reason to come back to this, because obviously a more view of interactions have, have within the economic life is, is, is high potential and, and, and is very interesting. So the next speaker is Andrei uh, Novak, uh, professor of psychology, among other things, director of the Center for Complex System Research, both at the University of Warsaw. He also has a, a connection to Florida, and uh, he will then talk about, um, I guess, future ICT in the light of the rest of the social scientists outside, outside social sciences outside of economics. So please, go ahead. Okay, so as I'm a social, uh, as I'm a social psychologist, my presentation will be slightly slighted towards the perspective of social psychology as I try to refer to general social sciences. So what we see in today's world is a huge and growing need for social science knowledge. We are in a time of permanent crisis with respect to many issues, such as pollution, global warming, energy resources, conflict, economy, and the rate of consumption is not sustainable. And what's more important, that in a such a complex world, consequences of decisions are difficult to predict. And as an example, I mean, you know, there is this very good intention to look for renewable energy uh, sources. It turned, it resulted in food being uh, or uh, being converted to ethanol, which resulted in, uh, in hunger areas in some poor countries. This was totally unintended consequence of a good, of a good intention. And we don't understand the intentions of our, I mean, the consequence of our decisions in a today complex world. And all of these crises are basically social science, social processes uh, uh, crises. And social science knowledge is really needed to solve them. On the other hand, there is a lot of ethical issues connected with the rapid growth of ICT. I mean, uh, I think the development currently is driven by the needs of industry and governments. I mean, it may have many unintended consequences. It's most what important, and probably what's most important, we don't even understand what these consequences may be. So we see rapid development, I mean, of different technologies because they can be done. And this, this often, you know, in, involves uh, connecting, you know, I mean, uh, very long, uh, very strong invasion of privacy. It may, it may involve automatization of some processes with, uh, with consequences that we do not fully understand. And we, don't are, we are not aware what really are the dangers of uncontrolled expansion. I think a very important aspect that Dilke has already mentioned is information asymmetry. I mean, all the data that, that is being, uh, all the big data that is being collected raises the question of ownership. Who owns the data? I mean, there is a question also of privacy. I mean, how much privacy are we willing to, to, uh, to sacrifice in order to get, for example, better services? And the answer for people may be different than answers for companies. And it is especially important maybe to, un to understand that, un that access to unbiased information is the very basis for the foundation of our political system, which is democracy. I mean, if people need to make decisions, and this, this is supposed to be the highest guidance, the highest guides to you know, where policy goes, I mean, these decisions must be based on information, and this information must be must be understood and people must be aware of the type of decisions they're making and, and, and of the situation that around them. So all of this uh, and underscores the need for ethical reflection, I think, for which social sciences are especially qualified. And as I mentioned, I'm a social psychologist, so I view future ICT a little bit from the perspective of a psychologist. And you know, in, for humans, the largest and most important structure in among all, this, all the uh, mental structures is the self. 
and some people believe that development of the, and many actually researchers believe that development of the self was, uh, was the most important aspect after developing of language to develop, you know, to help establish what we are today with culture and very complex social relations. So the self-structure changes in a fundamental way how humans can regulate their behavior. It allows individuals to include model of oneself along cognitive representation of other people while anticipating the likely course of events. It allows one to run mental simulations and observe the likely consequences of the decision for himself or herself before making the decision. This way we can avoid costly errors. And uh, relating the anticipated consequence of action to goals and values provides the capacity for decision mechanisms in a f uh, to function in a purposeful way. So it also provides the sense of the identity and purpose. And today, societies have no self-structure that would correspond to the self-structure that, that humans have. So, uh, there is an abundance, clearly, of uh, information relevant to functioning of almost every aspect of societies. But, this information is not systematically evaluated and integrated, which limits its usefulness for regulation. Sometimes this information without the proper, uh, the proper aggregation interpretation can be even seen as a, as a, as a mess or, or informational noise. Also in societies, there is no systematic tools that could mimic anticipatory functions of the self. And moreover, this information is not fully available to individuals, as was, as was mentioned before. This is mainly uh, belongs to companies and, to, and, to, and, to, and to also, in some respect, to government. So, in a way, the, the goal of, uh, the broad goal of future ICT may be understood to, uh, to increase global social awareness, in a way, to provide societies with functions uh, similar to the self-structure. So, it will enable par purposeful action by so societies in service of goal achievement and realization of its values, avoiding crisis and facilitating sustained growth, with concerns both for long-term uh, uh, long consequences and ethicality. And if you look at the, at the critical components uh, of future ICT, uh, as for me, as a psychologist, it is you know, natural to map this into the functions of the self-structure. So, for example, planetary nervous system uh, will provide social awareness, the capacity to, to, uh, to monitor function of the societies on a global scale, to identify uh, threats and indicate oppor uh, opportunities. Exploratories will have integrative function, integrate data, develop new methods, come with new theories and simulation models of various aspects of societies. And Global Air Simulator will provide anticipatory function to humanity, enabling to base decision on considerations, uh, 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 decisions of considerations of the consequences. The crisis avoiding mechanism will, provide, uh, will perform regulatory function in service of societies, where some elements will be performed by the computer system and some will be just warn policymakers about po possible threats and provide information needed for decisions. So, looking at the, also uh, at the current development of, of uh, technology, and we're basically, I would say, our, uh, which is the base currently for the, the development of, uh, of societies, is that we can say that social sciences are not included enough in decision making. The, uh, there is a vast potential of social sciences which is not recognized by the public, policymakers, and the natural sciences. And really, social sciences should be working from the start on the, on the design of and in, in implementation of new technologies. Social sciences also should be connecting the current development to the series and the body of knowledge of the social sciences. What you often see is, is you know, uh, is that uh, there is a development of new ideas, new theories, with forgetting that a lot of very relevant work, or maybe not recognize that a lot of relevant work has been done in social sciences. We need, we need to bring in the relevant theories and data from social sciences. We have, we, have, uh, we have quite a lot of information that can be used, but we need to connect it. And if we look at this, social uh, root problems in ICT developments are social. 
So input from social sciences is critical. I was talking to currently to some people developing, coming for, uh, developing some uh, computer technologies, and they were saying, well, I mean, that technical problems are now easy. The, the, most, in, the most difficult in the barriers in the art, ICT development are social barriers, not enough knowledge in social sciences. So, for example, uh, Google is an implementation of social uh, principles, but this is not recognized. I mean, uh, advances in new technology critically depend on understanding social s systems. Think about Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, eBay, and many, many others. Reader success depends on being able to, to understand how trust works, how you build social capital, to understand the reputational system, to understand how you bring about social change, and so on and so on. I mean, these are old social science phenomena. Another aspect is, in the old view, humans were adapting to computers. So you had this very complex computer and interface, these extremely skilled computer scientists who could deal with them. They were like elite, right? It's very small elite, able to interact in a, with computers. Now, because of its pervasiveness, everyone is interacting with computers. So really, the success of technology depends on whether this can adapt to, to humans. So today, computers need to, uh, to adapt to humans, not humans to computers, and the question is how we, how we can achieve it. So in, in, in summing up, social knowledge is critical in the design of new technologies. I mean, there was a lot of discussion already about the big, big data, so not, and you know, big data networks, and you know, gathering data uh, in time, and this is which clearly brings totally new dimension to the social sciences. But I, but I want to, to point out something very specific to the toolbox of social scientists, which is, which is experiments, social experiments. And actually today we can, there, are, uh, there is a new way of doing social experimentation, where experiments can be, can be done online. And in, uh, most of the social psychological experiments are now being implemented online. And a very new exciting possibility is that we can design games and to study interaction, in, interaction of people uh, with each other in a specific simplified situations. So this is, so, so here is the, the example of, of experimental tribe, which is actually, actually implemented. And we have, in Warsaw, we have been working with a, tele, with a communication company where, again, we can do, we can do experiments, you know, on, online. And this is with, with people, with people taking part, people, people sign up for experiments. And there's also this whole service of, 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 of Amazon, uh, of Amazon uh, called Mechanical Turk, where, where you can basically hire people as responses to your, to your survey. So this is, suddenly we can do surveys, we can do, we can do, uh, we can do uh, new types of social research on very large populations. And, and this, I believe, very, in, in a profound way, transforms the toolbox of social sciences. Of course, we need to understand how this, such results may be different from results in real population. And this is a lot of work to be done in this very interesting direction. What's very important with this data is the question of, is the issue of participatory, of participatory ownership. So simply the question is, who owns the data and the knowledge? Traditionally, it was industry, governments, and their services. And really, participatory platform radically shifts the ownership. Uh, shared, no, uh, shared knowledge becomes public. So, uh, participatory platform, I mean, will allow individual, small businesses and NGO have similar access to large, as large industries and governments. So for, example, so, for example, NGO may monitor for trends the same way as a government can, and small business can, you know, can, can look for, for prediction, let's say, of, of you know, buying trends in the, in the same way as a, big, as, a, as, a big in, as a big industry. And this again raises a, a, a crucial question. I mean, the data should be presented and visualized in such a way that can be used by the large public. And this again, question for social sciences. How can we visualize and present big data in a way that would be meaningful and useful for, for the general public? So what is new? Well, I mean, clearly, first of all, 
because of this, we can build new social indices such as well-being, so for example, well-being, resilience, uh, potential for the certain things, for example, potential for conflicts, behavioral repertoires. We can gather real-time data, and we can test social theories on new unprecedented scale. But I think what's, what's for me, very new is new types of students. I mean, both in Warsaw University and Florida Atlantic University, I was absolutely surprised to see social psychology students asking me for most, more mathematics and computer science in their program. I mean, traditionally, social psychology meant not mathematics. So this is, you know, something very new is happening. I mean, this is actually, you know, for you, this happened for me, I think, in such a scale for the first time this year, where students just want more math and more programming. I mean, so, and this is very important because it means that a new generation of young researchers or research assistants is growing and they will be able to provide a natural link to the existing communities of social science to link traditional community with these new developments. So we can visualize uh, for decision makers patterns of, of, of you know, not, not only GDP but also happiness and we can also uh, and we can also uh, um, show the, let's, uh, the temporal dynamics of, of different variables, so you can see the change. And, and, and Mike Batty will show a lot of examples of visualizations so in the next presentation. I think it's very important for me also to, to realize that the main ideas of complexity approach were born in the social sciences. So, for example, the concept of emergence was was discussed by Durkheim in 32, and where he argued that at the group level, new properties arise that are not properties of the individual. And we talk about this, you know, all social forces acting on the individual. I mean, the slide, you know, the slide that Dirk was showing, I mean, this was Kurt, Kurt Levin, who was, who was showing this, you know, field of social forces. The problem was that classically, physical sciences could not provide the tools to deal with the complexity inherent in social phenomena. So really, I mean, you know, so, so there was this understanding verbalized by Snow in 43 about two cultures of science, about, about the fundamental difference between natural and the social sciences. And social, social phenomena are different from, from physical phenomena. For example, in social phenomena, there is a, the, the critical uh, importance has, uh, uh, meaning has critical importance. People react not to events as they are, but how they understand this. Moreover, this understanding is creating in social interactions. So it doesn't, it, 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 it doesn't agree. We need to understand the nature of, of interactions to understand the emergent meaning that only then will affect people, individuals' behavior. So com the complexity approach brings the tools social sciences always wanted. So computer simulations can capture the complexity of social theories. And moreover, this, this, the simulation tool become complex enough or sophisticated enough to capture such things as uh, inherent in any social theory as, as heterogeneity of agents or, or recognition that people are different, spatial network interactions, and also we can, now we can, we can uh, have uh, input meaning in our simulations. We can visualize complex data, discover pattern relationships. We can, we can focus on interactions, not components. And this is exactly what, what, what computer simulations allow us to do. Uh, we can understand precisely the, the nature of emergence, self-organization, and internal causation, which seem to be so intrinsic to social sciences. Computer simulations has given us the new tools for social sciences. And I mean, this is Epstein discusses in details of different, you know, uses of computer simulations. What I wanted to show on this slide is that they map very well on the, on the typical, on, on, the trad, on the traditional use of science, as we understand it, which is explaining prediction and application. And this is, again, the, this, is, this is from the, this is to, talking about application, and this is, again, a uh, slide showing, Dirk has presented research on the emergence of cooperation under, the, the, under different uh, conditions. What we see here is that, is that uh, among, among different strategies, um, uh, under conditions of limited, of interactions limited by space, the green, which is cooperators who are, who are able to the same, or who are willing to punish defectors, are prevailing. 
So the same simulation, if you increase networking, basically t uh, takes, uh, turns to defectors uh, to, the, uh, to the proliferation of defection. So we understand by this interaction, for example, that, that, that you know, providing spatial structure of, in, of interactions helps us to find collaborative solutions in such areas, for example, as, as, uh, as for example, uh, pollution behavior or, or, or the use of, of energy resources. So I think that extremely important, just summing up, I think that the, that the approach of complexity can allow us to link different levels of social reality that traditionally are fragmented. We can understand, uh, we can understand how the brain like, relates to the mind, the mind to social groups, and the groups combined into societies. So basically, this, uh, this approach, I believe, for social sciences provides absolutely new ways of integrating the fields. Another thing which I think is critical for social theory is understand the link between structure and function. I mean, because, because and, and we have seen here, for example, in their presentation, the, uh, the, uh, the examples of linkage between structure and function, depending on how you connect elements, or they will function in a different way. And, was that, uh, and so, tried, very often, these two, these two issues are discussed in separation, and finding you know, the ways to connect them uh, offers a way to integrate social sciences. And finally, I believe that all of this has two important, uh, two, I think, more, for me, extremely important aspects. First of all, the aspect of participation. So the democratic nature of participatory platform provides for social inclusion, involving uh, involvement of the civic societies, the new democracy based on the large availability of data, and social complexity for everyone. The systems are for everyone, not for just experts. The critical issue is to simplify the tools, which again is a task for us social, social scientists who are, who are supposed to give the requirement for the tools. Another extremely important aspect is that, is that Future ICT, I think, provides a policy wind tunnel. So it provides the anticipatory function where we can test, where we can use social theories and you know, integrated social, social theories to anticipate the, uh, to anticipate the effects of uh, different decisions. We can test new solutions to social problems by computer simulations. And catastrophes are often caused by good intentions gone bad because of unintended consequences. And Dietrich Donner describes it nicely in the, his book, The Logic of Failure. And I think that policy wind tunnel can avoid, if policy wind tunnel can avoid and help us avoid at least some of these catastrophes, it's a very interesting uh, option.